Hey, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing how to set up a boost trail. The method for the boost trail comes from the YouTuber code like me. I will leave a link to his YouTube channel down in the description. And with that, let's get started. So before we get started, we're going to create the image texture we're going to use for the boost trail. So in Blender, go into orthographic view, then front view, and then shift A, mash, plane, go into edit mode, rotate the mesh on the x axis 90 degrees to make it face forward and then exit edit mode open up a new window on the side and then in that newly opened window go to the shader editor and then we're going to create a new material with the created material move over to the side shift a and then we're going to look for a texture coordinate and then put that on the side and then from the object drag off and then look for a noise texture vector and then place that to the top and then we're going to shift D, duplicate it, connect the object also to the vector and then from the object again of the texture coordinate, drag off and then look for a mapping, mapping vector and then leave it at the bottom. Also in the window where the plane is, go into rendered view so that we can see what's going on there and then from the mapping node, drag off and then look for a linear light and then connect the middle texture node the color to a the mapping to b and then duplicate the linear light and then connect the first linear light to the b and then connect the top noise texture to the a and then we just move this over to the side of it and then from the linear light drag off and then look for a gradient texture vector and then change it from linear to spherical and then from just drag this over a bit more and then from the color of the gradient texture drag off and then look for a color ramp and then from the color from the color ramp drag that into the principal bsdf and then we get this so we're gonna kind of alter this a bit and then we're gonna take this window where the shader editor is drag this down make it about half and then we're gonna open up an image editor the reason for that is we need to see what the texture outcome is gonna be like so to see that we're going to shift a and then look for an image texture and then just leave that over there for now and then we're going to play around with the texture for now so we can get a result we want so you can set this up however you want i'm just going to leave it as is and then i'm going to actually play around with the color ramp over here make it a little bit smaller probably something along those lines then i'm going to add a gray just a bit to bring it up more like so and then the white and then like that and then over in the editor over here we're gonna go over to render view head over to bake and then by the bake settings we're gonna select by the lighting direct indirect connect those and then by the combine which says bake type we're gonna look for diffuse so we only want the color and then everything else is fine and then with the plane selected we're gonna Head over to the image texture, create new. We're gonna call this, I'm gonna call it fire. And then I'm gonna leave it as a 1K texture. Make sure the alpha is selected. And then the color can be black. And then I'm gonna say new image. And then from here, make sure the plane is selected and then the image texture node is selected as well. Then we're gonna hit bake. And then as you can see, now we have the image over here. What you want to make sure of is that the image, the baked image is within the perimeters of the image itself and that none of it touches the outside. This is because once we get into Unreal Engine and we set it up, if there are any, if there are any parts that are touching the outer edges, then it's going to reflect that in the, in the particles itself. So with this, nothing is touching. It's clearly in the center. That's fine. Then we're gonna go to image, save as, and then we need to save this somewhere. And then for the save, you wanna make sure it's PNG, RGBA, color depth, doesn't matter, space, nothing like that. And then we're gonna hit save image. And then with that, we're just gonna save this as well. And then we're gonna go out of Blender and into Unreal Engine. So now we are in Unreal Engine and we're going to need a couple of things. First thing we're going to need the sports car blueprint class. And then we're also going to need 
the SKM sports car, the skeletal mesh for the vehicle. But first, we are going to set up the boost effect. So in another area, create a folder. I create one called VFX. In here, as you can see, there is something here. I was experimenting a bit. This didn't work out so well. Just right click, select Niagara system. And then the one you want to look for in the Niagara system is the empty and then create. And then I'm going to call this NF NS underscore boost. And then we're going to open that up. And then in here, as you can see, there is currently nothing. We're going to save, quickly head back to the level. And then in the same folder, we're going to right click material. And then this is going to be M underscore go boost and then we're going to import the image we had so import the image we just created and then save all and then in the m boost open that and then remove the substrate eu default shading add a slab connect the purple pin to the front color and then what we're going to do here is we're going to hold t and left click get a texture sample and then for the texture sample the one we're going to look for is the fire texture that we just imported and then from here what we're going to do is we are going to look for a particle color and then from the particle color the rgb drag off and then look for a multiply node and then connect the rgb from the texture sample to the b and then from the multiply you want to drag off and then connect that to the emissive color and then from the triple s mfp we're going to drag off and then look for the transmittance to mean free path and then connect the sample the texture sample alpha to the transmittance color and then it's going to look like this and then to fix that what we're going to do is select the m boost change the blend mode from opaque to additive and then now as you can see we have a transparent the black parts are not transparent and then the white parts are visible and that's what you want so we're going to hit apply save and then we're going to close the material head over to the level select the material right click and then create a material instance and then just rename the material instance to mi boost and then we're going to save all then we're going to head back to the ns boost the niagara particle system and then where it says empty we're going to rename this to boost underscore fx and then by the sprite renderer where it says material we're going to select the fire or oh no it's boost so you're going to select the mi boost not the m boost just connect the material instance and then as you can see there's still nothing showing there let's just stop this to get the particle system so to get the particle systems to show up we're going to add a couple of things first we're going to do the meta update we're going to add a spawn rate and then the spawn rate we're going to set it to 100 so now as we, if we play you can see it just spawns the single image but it's not what we want we want it to actually spawn something that looks like it's moving so we're going to head over to the initialize particle where it says lifetime mode we're going to select that from direct to random then we're going to leave it between one and two that's fine and then by the color mode which is unset we're going to change this to random range and then you can select any two colors you want i'm going to select anywhere between Let's see, somewhere like uh, blue and like purple, then hit OK. And then if we play now, it still looks like this, but we want to get this fixed in a little bit. And then next thing we want to add is still under the particle spawn. We're going to add a shape location. The shape location is going to be a sphere. The radius, we're going to set it to something small, maybe like 40. And then we're going to leave it as is. And then the next thing we're going to add is velocity you're going to get a couple of issues just a fixed issue and then for the velocity we're going to set it not on the z axis change it to zero on the x axis set it to one and then if you play now you can see things are being spawned so now we've added that that's fine you don't have to worry about the particles going anywhere so then from there we're going to go to the particle update so now the last thing we're going to add is a sprite rotation sprite rotation rate and then what we're going to do is here it says rotation rate we're going to select that and then we're going to look for random random range float and then we're going to go from negative 60 all the way to 60 and then we're going to save this and then if you play it and then it looks like that 
so that's fine so now we're going to close the niagara system then we're going to head over to the skeletal mesh and then in the skeletal mesh we're going to select the root and then with the root selected we're going to click on the plus at the top and we're going to add a socket and then the socket we're going to rename it as left boost and then we're just going to move it to the left side of the vehicle so i've placed the socket somewhat more or less in the middle if you want it to look really good just put it a little bit inside so that it looks like it's actually coming out of the exhaust rather than putting it say like right on the edge of where the exhaust ends otherwise it just looks like it's attached to it instead of like it's coming out of the exhaust itself so now we're gonna add another socket because we can't duplicate it so select the root add plus another socket and then the socket gonna f2 r underscore boost and then we're just gonna select the left boost and then copy over some of the coordinates so now we have those two set up and then we're gonna save and then we're done over here so we're gonna exit go to the sports car go to the viewport and then in the viewport what we're gonna do is oh before we do anything else we need to actually go back into the okay i just save all over here we actually need to go back into the skeleton there's something i forgot to do so in the skeleton mesh select the sockets show movement as you can see the x is pointing forward that is that is actually wrong the x needs to point away from the vehicle in the rear direction so we just need to change the z rotation to 180 do it for both of them and then we're going to save now we can close the skeleton mesh and then in the components with the sports car selected a component niagara particle system component and then we're going to call this l underscore boost and then over here by the niagara system we're going to select the ns boost and then it says over here by the socket select the search then we're going to select left as you can see it's a little bit big so we need to kind of change that a bit select the scale and then set it to something like 0.5 or smaller because it's a little bit big okay i can fix this later on for now let's just continue on with the video and then we're going to do is going to take the l boost Control d and then we're just going to rename this to r boost and then let them going to do the same thing it already has the niagara select it already has the niagara system selected so by the sockets set socket on the right so now we have both of them set up and then what you want to do is for each one of these you want to deselect the auto activate so deselect auto activate deselect and then compile and save and then we're going to head over to the event graph and then in the event graph where the boost happens right here at the end what you're going to do is we're going to drag in the r boost and the left boost and then we're going to drag off from either one of them and then search for activate and then we're going to connect both of them and then just connect that at the end of the code and then we're going to duplicate the two nodes and then from either one yet again just drag off and then look for deactivate and then we're going to connect them both and then just connect to the end of the code and then we're going to compile and save and then head over to the level see if it works save all and then play the level so as you can see it works although it's a bit much it's a it's too big but that's fine so long as it works we can scale them at a different time but the boost system does indeed work as you can see when you press the boost it activates and then once it's done it deactivates once again so that's fine it works everything is good and we haven't gotten any errors so that brings us to the end of this video and until the next one.